And as we get you, the Swami's got his hand like this, resting his chin on his arm, and the arm, his elbows on the edge of the chair. And as we sing this, Swami's head goes like this, and it's just stuck on his face. Loving Sai Ram to one and all. It's Christmas time, so I'd like to share a little incident in my life with Christmas. I'd like to go back to an incident. It happened to be a September, and I was walking through a really big supermarket, probably about this, almost the size of the Sai Kuban Tall. And I was thinking how incredible it would be to be able to be at Swami's Lotus Feet and sing the song, that famous song, the Hallelujah Chorus. Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And as I was thinking this, all of a sudden I started playing on the PA system. Now this is not kind of music that you have in a shopping centre. And of course if it's Christmas and people are tired of Christmas carols, I can understand, yes, maybe we pick at Handel's Hallelujah Chorus. But for those in India, you will know that this time of the year is the time of Pitapak, it's the time of Pratasi. And in South Africa, it's in the middle of nowhere. And because the thought had come out, and all of a sudden it started playing instantaneously as the thought arose, the tears just started coming down. I'm saying, Swami, wow, I just thought, and yeah, you're putting on the hallelujah chorus. And I'm standing with my hands on the trolley handle like this, and the tears are rolling down, and they're falling onto my shirt. And the people are walking past and they're looking at me. I didn't mind. I think you've got your problems, I've got mine. Mine's a divine problem. It's so beautiful that Swami's actually responded. It's so, it's in, so incredible. It so happened that Swami had chosen to go to Whitefield after 17 years for Christmas for 2000, the big, great millennium after 2000 years after the birth of Christ. And everybody thought that. The crowd was so big that Swami would be going back to put a party. So Arthur Hillcott and some of the team came back to put a party to start putting up the decorations, making arrangements for Christmas in Prashanti. But Swami had other ideas. One day he turned around and he said, Where's Arthur? He said, No, Arthur's preparing for Christmas in Pudapati. He said, No, but Christmas is in Whitefield. And then they had to phone them, they had to start taking down the decorations, they had to bring the decorations, pack them, and put them in a truck, and bring them back to put a party. So it was fabulous being in a situation where we could spend Christmas at put a party closer, more intimate. Of course, it was a very, very big crowd. And we sat in the hall there next to the Ramesh Hall, the, the, the Ramesh um, area for Darshan. And we sat in a half circle, as is traditional for choir. And I sat at the very back. My One of my tasks was to keep the register. So I looked after the register, all the people coming and going. As they came in, I learned their names, which paid the very big dividends, as I'll explain a little bit later. Got to know them all personally um, at a particular level. And, and it seemed quite peculiar that Swami called all these particular people. That in, all of them, each one of them had amazing stories of their own. Two of them had gone to the hospital. The hospital was being built, the super speciality hadn't been inaugurated. It was inaugurated on the 19th of January, about two, two, two to three weeks later. And the two of them had heard about this hospital and they wanted to have a look at it. And there they were standing, just the two of them, and Swami's car came. Just this one car with the driver and Swami. And Swami came in, the gates, is a special gate, gate four, which they keep for Swami. Today we use gate three when we go in as devotees to go, go in there for the people going for medical treatment. So Ami came in his gate four, he went around the circle, around the, the front by the foyer there and straight out. And the two boys just lifted up their hands and Swami so just looked at them, would have raised his one hand, smiled at them and drove right out. It's like special that Swami went there just for these two boys to be at this particular place. 
So all the people had these incredible stories. And there was this peculiar phenomenon. When I broke out of it, took a step out of the half circle where we sat with the choir mist at the, the front of the stage, and we sat like this, and I sat at the back over here, as I say, to take the register so that I could mark the boys, the men present as they came. As you broke out, the choir was absolutely perfect. You couldn't hear a note out of place. Even from the first day, it sounded like a professional choir was singing. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, this is a bit strange. Are my ears playing tricks? And I stepped back into the half circle, and there was your well. Too fast, too high. And it just makes the song not that pleasant. Something. Step back out, perfect. Step back in, and you could hear yeah, hundreds of mistakes. So one by one, I would pull the boys out. I said, nudge, uh, you know, nudge Quibus over there. I need Quibus, you see. And I call Quibus, and I say to him, I want, you to, I, want, I, want, I want you to see something. I want you to tell me if this is happening or not. For them to be able to experience this, the reason. So by this stage, I knew 100% that it was happening so beautifully. I'd say, what do you think the choir sounds like? Oh, it sounds amazing. I said, now, go and stand over there where I normally sit, and I want you to listen. And then he'd go there, and it's like you see this confusion come over his face, because it, all of a sudden, it immediately became terrible. And I tap him on the shoulder, and so step out of the, that half circle, and he stepped out, once again, perfect. So this started going around, but this pecu peculiar lila. Right? So on the night, we sang pretty well, I've got to tell you. But um, there was some kind of editing that happened daily with each choir practice. And of course, he made it truly magnificent on the night we sang. We sang very well, but he made it truly magnificent on the night we sang. And one of the incidents that lives in my heart is we had a song, and in the song we asked Swami to go and bless all the world, all the beings, all the world, and all the universe. And this is in the last, the last verse of the song. And we we singing to Swami. And as we get to the Swami's got his hand like this, resting his chin on his arm, and the arm, his elbows on the edge of the chair. And as we sing this, Swami's head goes like this, and it's just this look on his face. And it's like he's gone. It's like he's now busy around the universe doing this this blessing for everybody in the universe. And we finish the song. And we do the next song and Swami still hasn't come back. He's still out of town. And we finish the program and everybody's sitting in silence and we're just looking at Swami. And the divine sweetness of this, what can I say with this? Like, I apologize for keeping you waiting. You know what I mean? It's like I just had to bless the universe quickly. I, I just wanted to run up and grab Swami. It was just so lovable, so adorable. It was just so truly amazing to have this particular experience. Every song, Swami will pick up the program as we start the song and he'd look at it intently, put down the program and enjoy it. And this is how we sang to Swami. And at the end of this particular period was thunderous applause. And I knew it sounded much better than we were capable of. And when we came out, we had Christmas dinner, as it was the 24th, in the hall where we practiced. And there was this face coming towards me, this big face with this incredible smile, almost wrapping around his ears, this glowing face. And I'm thinking, that face is very familiar. I'm just trying to think who it is. The, because the smile was so big and so radiant, it took me a while to register. It was actually the warden. And he came and he grabbed my hand and he pumped my hand. And he said, Swami was so happy. Swami was so happy. And he said, all the, tray, all the boys had gone to tray. And the boys were with Swami for an hour. And he said, what had actually happened is that Swami spent 45 minutes speaking about the devotion from the boys, in the, 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 the people in the choir. And he said, Swami was just so happy with you people. 
And then afterwards I saw Neil Kumar, and Neil Kumar came up to me, shook my hand. I seemed to be this figure representing like the choir. I was the, the worst performer there out of the lot. <laughs> and he said, our boys always sing so good for Christmas. He says, but this year, the, the, the Western choir, he said, um, we couldn't touch you guys. Okay. And I know it wasn't us. I know it wasn't us. I know Swami had done this incredible job of making us all like super professional singers. And it was this beautiful, everybody was on a high. We won a high for days. And one of the things that after we'd finished in the choir, moved to the next day, the next couple of days, Every day, the seven dolls who get the lines to go into Dosh and say, choir queue, choir queue. So they'd line up the choir queue on the men's side, they'd line up the choir queue. Now this, we've never experienced this before. And what, what would actually happen was it was still happening. The students would go in first, we sit behind the students, and then all the VIPs would sit behind us, which is actually <laughs> quite peculiar. On the ladies' side, the ladies' choir sat in front of the VIP ladies. And it stayed like this all the way until it was actually time to leave and Swami had come back to put a party. So two days later we left and we came back. And it was amazing to know that this person who wanted to sing the Hallelujah Chorus, one of the songs had the Hallelujah Chorus, God of Gods, Lord of Lords. And I cried like a baby while this was being sung. And that was Christmas in Whitefield. It was such a truly amazing experience. <music>